Hello and welcome back to your Pennsylvania Dutch Minute. We continue our series on famous Pennsylvania Dutch people with this episode about the Governor Simon Snyder. So Governor Snyder um, was born in 1759 and he would go on to become the third governor of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania and our first governor who came from Pennsylvania Dutch background or German, German descent. Uh, Snyder was born on the 5th of November, 1759, in Lancaster. His parents had immigrated to the colony of Pennsylvania uh, earlier in 1744. His father was named Anton Schneider, still using the old Germanic spelling, S-C-H-N-E-I-D-E-R, and his wife, Agnesa Kramer. And as mentioned, they came to Pennsylvania in 1744 uh, with that huge wave of immigrants that had come, you know, during the 1700s. His father died in 1774 when Snyder was 15. He then became an apprentice uh, at a tannery in York, Pennsylvania, where he learned that trade. Uh, in 1784, 10 years later, um, he moved to present-day Sealands Grove, Pennsylvania, and there he opened a gristmill. Um, during that time period in Sealands Grove, he was elected as Justice of the Peace and served in that role for 12 years. Uh, you can still see his original home. It's at 121 North Market Street in Sealands Grove. It's on the National Register of Historic Places. It's known as the Governor Simon Snyder Mansion. Uh, a little bit more about his personal life. In 1790, Snyder married Elizabeth Michael, and they had two children. Sadly, Elizabeth died in 1794, four years later, and Snyder was then left to raise their young children. As was common in those days, Snyder quickly remarried, this time to a daughter of a pretty prominent central Pennsylvania family, the Antis family. He married Catherine Antis in 1796, and with his second wife, they had five more children, um, all the while living in the Sealands Grove, in Sealands Grove. So, as mentioned earlier, he began his political career as a justice of the peace, um, in 1789, he would be elected as a delegate to revise the Pennsylvania State Constitution, and he completed that task in 1790. Following this, he was elected to the Pennsylvania House of Representatives, serving uh, for, seven, for quite a number of years from 1797 to 1807. It was during this time that he was also elected to serve as the Speaker of the House for the years of 1804, 1805, and then again in 1807. It was while serving in the House of Representatives that Snyder sought the governorship as the political party of the Jeffersonian Democrats um, in 1805. He was defeated, though, by a very famous governor of Pennsylvania, Governor Thomas McKean, who was also a Jeffersonian Democrat. Um, but that didn't put him down. Uh, he fought again in 1808. Uh, the Jeffersonians rallied behind Snyder, and he ran for governor, and this time he won. And he would uh, win again another time in 1814. Um, that time he'd run against a Federalist, but the Jeffersonians were in, in pretty strong power in Pennsylvania at that time. It was during his governorship that, of course, the War of 1812 broke out. And it would also be during that time period that Governor Snyder suggested that we relocate the capital of Pennsylvania from Lancaster, where it was at that point, to a more central location, and they chose the city of Harrisburg. This was approved, and of course today, Harrisburg is the capital of Pennsylvania. Um, during his governorship, there really wasn't that much going on. Of course, we mentioned that he moved the capital. Of course, the War of 1812 was, only, was also going on. We know that at the end of that war, the United States would come out victorious, and that would really lay the foundation for the beginning of the blossoming of the United States. After his terms as government, uh, as governor, excuse me, Snyder was then elected um, back to the state senate, uh, Pennsylvania State Senate in 1818. However, he died <clears throat> of typhoid fever in Sealands Grove in November of 1819 before he was able to take office. Um, and he is buried at the Old Lutheran Cemetery in Sealands Grove. And you can visit his grave uh, if you uh, find yourself in the Sealands Grove area. Also, while there, of course, you can visit his mansion as well. Um, today, 
The county where Sealands Grove is located, Snyder County, is named after Governor Snyder. There's also Snyder Avenue in South Philadelphia, which was named his honor. And at Penn State University, there is one of the residence halls is also named in his honor. Um, so a little bit about our first Pennsylvania Dutch governor. We can, of course, uh, imagine that he spoke a lot of Pennsylvania Dutch as a child growing up in the household that he did. You know, as he got into politics and as he moved into north central or central Pennsylvania in the Seals Grove, Snyder County area, we can speculate as to how much Pennsylvania Dutch he spoke. Of course, he would have also been speaking English, uh, being that uh, prominent in government uh, and English being the language of government in Pennsylvania at the time still is today. Um, but I would imagine that, of course, he would have never forgotten his Pennsylvania Dutch. Um, and maybe he did speak it with some of the other uh, members of the House of Representatives, you know, side barring on the on the on the floor of the House. I, that's what I would imagine. Um, I can't prove that, of course. But um, we're proud of his Pennsylvania Dutch heritage um, and being our first governor. And, um, you know, just another person to add to that chain of famous Pennsylvania Dutch people. So Governor Simon Snyder. Great job. Um, we'll continue this series looking at other famous Pennsylvania Dutchmen in the future, and women, hopefully. Um, I'll be honest, I've been doing some research, and it is difficult to find famous Pennsylvania Dutch women in history, and a lot of that has to do with the fact of the role that women had in society in the 1700s, 1800s, as most of you are aware. Um, so it has been difficult, however, I'm not giving up. And if you know of any famous Pennsylvania Dutch men, or women, especially women, please shoot me an email and say, hey, how about this person? Um, I had somebody already send me an email email about another um, Pennsylvania Dutchman to, to do a video on that I had never heard of, and uh, that video will be coming out down the road. Um, but I'm always looking for suggestions. My email is at the end of the video, of course, um, so feel free to email me. If you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel, please do so. Tell your friends about what we're doing here, and uh, keep supporting and practicing your Pennsylvania Dutch, and be proud of your Pennsylvania Dutch culture. Um, you know, we have this phrase in the Pennsylvania Dutch language that if you ain't Dutch, you ain't much. And uh, we'll, I, I wholeheartedly stand by that. So until next time, uh, keep practicing, be proud of your Pennsylvania Dutch heritage, and mock scoot! Mm -hmm.